All right. So let's uh, take on the second half of chapter 16, uh, the lending process. And um, I had a banker come in, uh, a couple of bankers come in last year and talk about the lending process. And I'll, I'll post the videos uh, that I made of those um, lectures. All right, steps in the lending process. First, determine the types of loans that you want to make as a bank and the amount of, of the loans. Okay, what size loans do you want to make? Okay, then assign lo loan officers based on industry or territory, geography, or maybe they're indus industry specialists. Okay, then the uh, commercial lenders go out and find customers. Okay, they evaluate the credit worthiness uh, of the customers and will look at how they go about evaluating credit worthiness. Can they pay back? We'll look at the seven C's on the next slide, and uh, these things are actually used in banking, all right? Uh, then uh, commercial lenders will make site visits to assess the collateral, make sure the collateral is real, okay? Uh, then they will develop and execute a loan agreement, and there's some standard legal, docu uh, legal language in loan agreements. Then they will monitor compliance with the agreements, make sure the file is well maintained, and provide customer service. So call on the customer, um, ask the customer if they, how things are going, uh, make sure that they uh, keep up with the customer's file. All right, so is the borrower credit worthy? The seven C's of credit. First, character, okay? What is the specific purpose of the loan? Make sure it is a, there's a legitimate purpose there. Make sure that the purpose of the loan is consistent with the loan policy of the bank. Make sure that the borrower has a good reputation. As a lender, you want to make sure that you do your due diligence. You don't want to look bad if a loan goes bad. Okay, look at the credit record of the borrower, okay? So you can pull their bill and their loan payment history, okay? You can look at their credit score. Look at the capacity of the borrower. Does the borrower have the legal authority to sign a binding contract, okay? Once again, it's one of those things, before you cut a check to a person, you better make sure that you know who that person is and that person has a, um, a um, the authority on behalf of an organization to borrow money, okay? Um, make sure that the borrower uh, generates enough cash flow to repay the loan or that the borrower has good assets to back up the loan if cash flow is inadequate. So you look first at cash flow of the borrower and then you look at the collateral. Then the conditions which are the economic and competitive conditions faced by the borrower. Uh, is the industry strong? Is the company strong? Is demand in the area strong? Okay. And then uh, control. Does the loan meet the laws and the regulations that pertain to the bank? Okay. So the seven C's of uh, credit worthiness. All right. Can a loan agreement be properly structured to meet the needs of the customer? Okay, this requires the lender and the borrower to understand the need the borrower has for capital. So often a borrower understands their particular uh, business. They may understand their technology, they may understand their customers, but the lender understands finance. And so it is the, the lender should help the borrower uh, to, uh, set up the terms of the loan. And a loan should only be made and structured in a way uh, that the borrower is able to pay the loan back. Okay? So it's up to the lender to help the borrower in that way. Okay? If a major borrower gets into trouble because of an inability to service a loan, which means they don't have adequate cash flow, the lender could find itself in trouble as well. There's an old saying, if you owe the bank a little bit of money, the bank owns you. 
if you owe the bank a whole lot of money, you own the bank. Okay? So think about that. So bankers have to be careful with loans that they make. Okay? And uh, as I said, it is up to the banker to sit down with the, the customer and help the customer understand finance, understand cash flow, understand returns, okay? And to set up a loan agreement that is doable for the customer. You never want to put the customer in a bad position. All right, so what protects uh, the bank from a bad loan? First, compensating balances. What is a compensating balance? This is when the bank requires the customer to deposit cash at the banking institution. And that happens quite a bit. If you want a loan from a bank, you're going to have to keep some cash at the bank. Okay? Often, if, if, you're going to, if you're a business and you borrow from the bank, then you handle your payroll through the bank. Okay? Then there's the customer's cash flow. Then the customer's balance sheet and collateral. Types of collateral that are out there that are used frequently by borrowers. Accounts receivable. Inventory. Real property, which is real estate, land, and building. Personal property, cars, and equipment. Okay. Personal guarantees, which are happen when um, an individual who it, it works in an organization and the organization is borrowing the money, the business is borrowing the money, but the individual says, I will personally, I will put up my personal assets to back a loan. Okay. All right. So here's some of the information that um, banks have to have in their files prior to making a loan and once they make a loan, they have to update this information. So, financial statements. I got a call today from a client who has several real estate loans, and he said, I need uh, uh, the uh, month end statement for December 31st of 2019 to show my banker because they want to make sure that I'm in good financial condition on my loans, for my loans. Okay. Uh, credit bureau or credit score. Okay. Verification of employment. Okay. If you go to um, borrow money, you, there needs to be um, a copy of a resolution or an agreement that authorizes the organization to borrow the money and also authorizes the person who is signing for the loan to sign. Okay. Credit ratings. Uh, and then uh, basically understanding the reputation of the business through local newspapers, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Department of Commerce. Okay? All right. Okay, so what are some of the key components of a loan agreement? First, the promissory note. Okay, this specifies how much principal is involved what the interest rate is, what the payments will be, and when they are due. Okay? And the promissory note also will tell us when uh, the loan is due to be rolled over or renewed. Okay? Uh, the loan commitment agreement, uh, this is when there is a line of credit and the bank will uh, articulate or express the amount um, of money that is available and what the commitment fee will be. Okay, There's a section on collateral, so the assets are described and then the, pr the process is laid out as to how and when the lender could take possession. So what triggers a default and, um, and how will the lender go through the process of taking the assets. Okay. Uh, and sometimes lenders will take temporary possession of title. That's called having a lien. So a lender can put a lien on the title to assets, which would, keeps the borrower from selling the asset. Okay? As long as there's a loan balance outstanding, 
uh, the lender could have a lien. So if you own your home but you borrowed money uh, in the form of a mortgage or in the form of a second mortgage, your lender has a lien on your property until you retire that loan. All right, some other parts, the loan covenants, okay? These are promises that lenders require borrowers to make to protect their financial position. You can't borrow money from a bank and then take off, all right? So the two kinds of covenants, first, affirmative covenants. They require the borrowers to take action, like borrowers must submit financial statements, borrowers must prove that they maintain insurance on the property, and borrowers, borrowers must hold adequate liquidity. Okay, these are agreements. Negative restricts borrowers from taking action, like adding new debt. Before you add new debt, you've got to go to your existing lender and get their permission. Mergers and acquisitions, before you sell your company or buy another company, you got to go to your lender. Before you sell assets, you got to talk to your lender. Sometimes before you pay dividends, you must talk to your lender because the lender wants to make sure that these items, if you do these items, it will not endanger the loan. Okay? Then there are borrower guarantees or warranties, one of which is to certify that information on the loan application is accurate. Do not commit fraud. Then you make personal assurances like pledging personal assets. Okay. Then it's, again it's laid out what constitutes a default. What violations trigger the process of default. And it's very important for a borrower to understand this so that nothing surprising happens. Okay, don't want to be caught off guard. There is a loan review process. Once the loan is made, then you, ha you have to check on the file to make sure that all documents are up to date. Does the loan still fit in with the loan policies? How many times are we going to read that? Okay. Uh, is the borrower paying this loan and other loans off? Are they maintaining the quality of the collateral? Are they submitting financial statements on a timely basis? And what do those financial statements look like? Okay. Banks typically will review their largest loans more frequently. Okay, this is common sense. If a loan is potentially troubled, then you're going to keep a closer look on those loans. Okay. And if the economy or if an industry experiences problems, then that will prompt the commercial lender to take a, a, a look at uh, companies that they've loaned it to that are in these industries that are having problems. Okay? A loan workout is the process of recovering funds from a problem loan situation. There are some warning signs that a loan could be in trouble. Okay? If you do not receive financial statements in a timely manner. Chances are the borrower is hiding something from you. Okay. If if uh, some some major changes in accounting methods have taken place, look out. There may be some games being played. Okay. If um, other debts are being restructured, uh, or if the company eliminates their dividend payments to save cash. There's some problems, okay? Uh, if, it's, if the company uh, has publicly traded stock and the stock price has gotten hit, uh, that could be an indication of a credit problem. And of course, you know, financial losses, obviously. And if a company has taken on too much debt, okay, to adverse change in the capital structure, i.e., either they've added too much debt or they've had to write off some of their capital. That could be a problem. And if sales are not living up to the expectations um, that management had, okay? And um, if some of the cash deposits that the customer has um, start to shrink, 
then that is a sign, a warning sign that the uh, company is having liquidity problems. All right, here's a, another list that comes right out of uh, an FDIC examination handbook. So indicators of a weak or troubled loan, and so some of these things uh, are just a, a repeat that come right out of the, as I said, right out of the FDIC handbook. Um, so uh, take a look at these things. Um, so the, if, when the examiner comes in, um, they're going to check these things out. Um, is a customer delinquent or irregular with their loan payments? Has the customer in the bank had to frequently alter the loan terms? Is it, there a particularly high um, interest rate on a loan? Okay. All right. Is the customer taking on too much debt? Okay. Um, are, is the customer going out and getting um, appraisals of assets to increase the net worth of the customer? Okay. All right. Is the customer selling assets off to pay off to pay meet loan payments? Okay. All bad signs. Okay. So is the bank not doing their job? Okay. Did they, are they loaning money on future events that may or may not happen? Are the files complete or incomplete? Okay. Um, is the bank loaning money to employees or directors or stockholders? That's a big no-no. Okay. And is the bank loaning money to support speculative purchases? And again, we actually had a person at Harding, actually a graduate of Harding, not at Harding, but a graduate of Harding, who was a, a commercial property developer who uh, borrowed a bunch of money for speculative uh, development and ended up um, committing fraud and going to jail, going bankrupt, going to jail. All right, so when a loan is in trouble, okay, the first thing you want to do is um, be on the front end of it. Understand, don't get caught um, blindsided, okay? And you want to, at that point, you have a loan workout specialist who steps in and uh, is going to work the loan out as opposed to the commercial lender, okay? What options? Sit down, try to help the customer. Make sure that there are not other things going on that you as the lender are unaware of, like um, is the IRS suing the company um, and are, are other uh, firms suing the company, okay? And what is your preferred option? Work it out. Revise the loan agreement. You're not trying to shut a customer down. You really don't want the collateral. You want to try to keep that customer in business and help that customer get through a tough time. All right, Chapter 16 is in the books. Get after the homework, and we'll see you in Chapter 17. Peace out. Shalom.